Well, we survived the night. <laughs> it was a new experience for us, I'd say. I don't think we've ever been out in wind that strong before. We ended up heaving two from about seven o'clock at night till two o'clock in the morning because the wind was blowing, what do you say, like 30, 35, maybe into the 40s. It was really strong and the seas were really confused. And we needed to sail on about a beam reach, which meant that we were taking the waves on the side and it was just a mess. So after we hove two, about two o'clock in the morning, the wind uh, calmed down a little bit so we could sail out from behind the island and uh, Squeaky took over and we've been beaten to weather ever since. The waves are very confused here too. We've got some coming this way, we've got some coming this way. It's bizarre, but uh, we're still making progress. We're doing like four or five knots and we've only got about 30 more before we get to uh, Mont Saint Nicolas. Only 30 miles, yet in this nasty weather, it took us all day to get there. Tacking back and forth against currents, waves, and some abrupt wind shifts. The wind gusts kept increasing, the waves became higher, closer together, and even more confused. Aside from an unexpected visit from some dolphins, we were in for a long, uncomfortable wet ride. We stayed on the eastern inside edge of the Windward Passage, trying our best to gain a little protection from land. So right at the end of that rainbow is the entrance to Carinage, or Mont Saint Nicolas, where we're trying to sail to. It's literally marking the entrance, so it's kind of cool. Oh no! Then lost Again? his hat! Again? <laughs> Son of a... I have a thing for losing my hats in Haiti, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, we don't enter encourages at night, but since we've been there before, we knew a little bit more about the bay, and with the light of the full moon, we were not worried about it. Around 11 o'clock at night, we finally entered the bay of Mol Saint Nicolas. Several things happened that day. We saw dolphins, had the roughest passage we've ever done, saw a double rainbow, and even had a full moon. And we're not really the superstitious kind, but after we anchored, we realized that all of this happened on Friday the 13th. This was probably the most intense 36 hours I've ever done on a sailboat. It, they, things got crazy. And um, things got crazy in here too. <laughs> when you think that your boat is ready to sail and then you take on that kind of trip and everything just like... Pfft. Well, not everything. For the most part, it's not bad. Um, but it turns out the bottom one needs some extra help as well. So yeah, but anyway, we're here, we're exhausted, and we're hungry, and I'm going to eat, and we're going to have glasses of wine, 
and then sleep and we'll take care of cleaning all this tomorrow. So this is what we just sailed up yesterday and it says mostly like 20, 25 gusting to 30. Well, now that we know what 30 knots of wind and beating into 15 foot high seas is like, um, we're probably going to hunker down here in Mulsey Nicola for about a week until it calms down a little bit more. Um, cause that was, uh, that was unpleasant <laughs> at best. So we might be here a little longer than we thought because our next leg is going to be beating to windward again to get to Cap Ice Sand, which is over here. So I guess we'll use this week or so anchored here to get some boat projects done and uh, maybe explore a little bit on land because last time we were here, we didn't have time for any of that. So we'll see what happens. So one of the things that we did when we were in Port-au-Prince was ask around to family and went through my old closet um, and got a few bags of clothing and shoes and hats and things like that and then I will be giving to our friends in Calinage. And we also got a whole bunch of soccer balls because we know that everywhere kids love to play. So we, there is a really cool store in Port-au-Prince that basically looked like a giant target and sold everything and even those. It's normally very calm around here, but because of the same order, our dinghy ride was um, exciting. There was so much spray that we made good use of our little pump and bailed as we went. This town will always have a special place in my heart, and we were so happy that we came back for a visit. It was a school day, so all the older kids were at school and the men at work, but we got to see Woodney and most of the moms. But the best part of the day is that we got to play soccer with the younger kids. After a few hours, it was time to head back home with smiles on all of our faces. So 
So yesterday we met this awesome guy, uh, Jimmy, who came over to our boat and we chit-chatted a little bit. He has a few leaks, so since we have fiberglass and some epoxy, um, we offered to help him out with that. So this morning we came over to his little beach area and now we are just took the boat out of the water and took the sails out and we're about to flip it and fix the boat. So we're gonna leave Jimmy some homework uh, because the boat is not dry enough yet to repair it. So while we're gone today, he's going to clean it and send over the holes um, all the way through the fiberglass. And we showed him how to do that. And then tomorrow when we come back early in the morning, we'll be able to fiberglass it over and fix the problem. In the meantime, Jimmy invited us over to his place for lunch. He built his little house himself out of scraps left behind from the hurricane. His house stands alone on top of a hill with the most wonderful view of the bay. His old house in town was destroyed by Hurricane Matthew, so he took the opportunity to move and start new. We took the food with us back down to the beach and enjoyed it over the sound of the waves and a few exciting stories. Good morning everyone, so we are back at Jimmy's beach, it's bright and early and Dim and Jimmy are fixing his boat. They say cruising is just boat repair in exotic places, even if sometimes it means fixing another person's boat. We fixed four holes in about seven other cracked areas in that little fiberglass boat. We were so grateful to give Jimmy a helping hand. He's one of the happiest and most friendly people we've met so far. So the boat's all fixed up and we're gonna let it dry and in the meantime we're gonna go explore a cave around the corner. Mont Saint Nicolas is full of hidden treasures, including many beautiful caves.
This cave was the perfect spot to hang out and swim around. Deep enough to motor right in, wide enough to enjoy the space, and the water was as clear as a swimming pool. We spent hours there, daydreaming and sharing ideas about the potential of this magical place. We hope you enjoyed some of the magic and beauty of this place and can't wait to share our next adventure with you when I get to go sailing with Jimmy. But until then, cheers! Um, I think at the worst, when we, we, we hope that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I almost lost my hat! Uh, this was tech. Oh, well. Mm. Cut!